Ladies and gentlemen, today we found an extremely rare opportunity. This 2019 Prevo Liberty Coach Quad Slide has just become available. It is extremely rare that we see a late model Liberty Coach on the market. Frank Connick, Setter, how you doing today, sir? Good, how are you, Andrew? Excellent, thank you. This is a rare opportunity. What is going on, sir? Yeah, so this is a 2019 quad slide Liberty coach, single bath in the center of the coach, aft shower. We were able to get a hold of this coach. The customers were making a change in their life, so we grabbed it as soon as we could and got it in inventory and got it all ready to roll. And this is one of my favorite Dean Lauchs paint jobs. It reminds me of Florida or almost like a beachy theme. What's the uh, inspiration of this coach? You know, some people have even said it's a uh, Tiffany blue that's on there as well, if, you, if that does something for yes, you. Sir. So, yeah, but it's a great coach, great paint job. Yeah, even with the quad slide, I had a chance to talk to the previous owner and they really like that with the slide rooms in, there's still a lot of space in this coach. What's some of the advantages of a quad slide? Well, on this has the drop floor, so it's got the flat floor passenger side slide. This was the second one that we had built, and you got a lot of room in the front end of the coach, the way the kitchen's laid out, the other layout uh, in the front uh, allows for when both slides are in, that it's fully usable in the front of the coach. When the slides are in in the back, you can't get around the bed in the back, but your bathroom's center anyway, so that doesn't eliminate the ability to get to the bathroom as far as that goes. So all the other uh, items, refrigerator, the dinette area, the galley, all that stuff is all usable and easy to get around with the slides in. With the quad slide, uh, what's going on with the bays up front here? Okay, so. On the bays, the doors all swing open because we don't have a situation of having to go up like we normally do. Our first bay, and we didn't lose any of the height in the bay with the flat floor either, so we still have the same height, which, as we know, the Prevo has the tallest bays in the industry. So we've got our own Liberty Coach manufactured slide-out floor. That's going to be the lowest profile in the industry, so you don't lose any bay height. Tool drawer here. We have uh, storage drawers here on top. And how many miles are on this particular coach? Uh, this coach has got miles in the mid to upper 30s. Being on the Prevo chassis, these buses are known to go a million miles. Oh, two to two and a half to three million. I mean, this type of mileage on this coach is insignificant. Insignificant. Yeah, so there's a lot of value in getting a slightly pre-owned Prevo Liberty Coach. Why does the Liberty Coach family choose to convert on the Prevo chassis? Well, the Prevo bus chassis has so many years behind it. I mean, they're getting close to their 100th year in business. When they're building 600 to 1,000 bus, buses a year and the millions and millions and hundreds of millions of miles that they've driven, all these years, there's so much experience, there's so much knowledge that none of the other companies in there could even fathom. So the structure of the chassis is so incredibly strong and the uh, longevity of it because on the H for an example, the main part of the chassis is all stainless steel. And then the substructures for the uh, front axle, the drive axle, and the tag axle, those are high tensile strength and regular steel as far as that goes, but there's, you know, you don't have corrosion issues behind the walls or anything else in the coach. The integrity of the shell, that it doesn't twist when you are in unlevel conditions. So the doors, the compartment doors all open up still properly and close properly. The front entrance door closes and opens properly, even though you've got the thing in a, in a, in a weird leveling characteristic because the ground is not flat. So, you know, all of these things are, are contributed to how the chassis uh, builder being Prevo, all of this knowledge from all these years uh, gets us to the point that we are at right now. We know your family recently celebrated 50 years in business. Congratulations. Uh, out of those 50 years of building motor coaches, how long have you been building on the Prevo chassis? 40 of those years. Wow. So there's probably been a lot of uh, learning over those 40 years <laughs> working side by side? There's no question. We've learned together. There's no question at all. So Prevo made a commitment to the RV or motorhome industry many, many years ago. They made the commitment to the service aspect so that they would, they essentially take care of the customer in the motorhome world differently than they do in the seated bus or touring industry because 
they're more particular, they're spending a lot more money for a finished unit than a tour operator is. The way that they treat them, the way that they go see them, the way that they listen to their little issues that they have or large issues that they have. They take care of it all across the board. Yeah, and we've all seen Prevo buses used as, you know, Greyhound passenger buses. How is a Prevo bus that is converted into a motorhome different than the seated Prevo buses or the tour buses that we see out there? Well, your seated buses are going to be lower in height. They're not as much height on the interior side. So for us in the motorhome side, they add additional beam to be able to get taller. The windows are higher as well. The characteristics as far as the front end of the coach when you walk in is different. There's different idiosyncrasies in how the bays are done. A little bit here and there. The slide rooms, of course. Prevo builds the slides themselves. They build the chassis to accept the slide rooms. So that is a, a major engineering feat in itself as well. So there's differences that they do from one to the other, from motorhome to tour bus. It's just like the entertainer shells. The entertainer shells that they build are slightly different than the shells that we actually get or that the tour operators get. So they cater to those different industries very, very well. But the foundation still has the same fundamentals? Yes, exactly. Same fundamentals as far as how the service is done, how the coach and chassis is built. It's built by the same people. There's not a specific entertainer line or a specific motorhome line. It's all done on the same. But the finished product is really uh, stunning. So let's see what else is going on with this quad slide. We got the second bay here with a slide out on the floor. Uh, similar to the first bay. We also have another set of hanging drawers here for storage and then we have the AVR unit uh, Sound processor for the lower bay entertainment center. This is unique on the quads We actually took and made this uh, second bay door narrower added another structural member into the chassis and then this uh, body panel pulls out and on it is the 55 inch uh, TV Wow, that was so effortless. And right. so essentially you can have it closed and then still have the uh, TV out. I know the big advantages of the triple slide is easier access to your bays, but even with a quad slide, still super easy to access? Not, not hard at all, not hard at all. And do you know what that height is? That's gotta be close to five feet off the ground? I would or? say that's five feet, yeah. We have the third bay on the passenger side. This is the entertainment bay, we call it, with the uh, refrigerator storage, lots of storage in the coach. And as we're going through this coach, I can just tell how clean it is. Now, this is a pre-owned coach, but it appears to be in brand new condition. What do you do at Liberty Coach to, to make it like new again? Well, for an example, this particular coach has had three owners. So we're going through this and you can see how clean it is in the bays. I mean, even when you open up the interior part of it, you're gonna see the same thing. The customers were good to the coach and the way that we take care of it after we get it. So many people are amazed when we go to the different shows or RV parks, what have you, and we're displaying a used coach. Most people walk into it and think they're new and they're shocked that they're three and four and five and six years old. So this is why you see so many people transition in the class A world from maybe a 2020 or a 2021, and they'll go to a, a 2016 or a 2017 Prevo because the, the chassis is so, uh, so strong and the integral part of the chassis, you don't have to worry about that part of it. And the way that we do our interior and the way that we do our PDI process, the coach is essentially almost new. Yeah, and, and as we're talking here, I'm just admiring this Dean Laux paint job. This truly is one of my favorite pieces of artwork by Dean. I know there's a huge expense in having a world-renowned artist paint every Liberty Coach over the last 10 years. Why does Liberty Coach choose to have such an expensive paint job? Well, because I, well, I believe, we believe that the coach deserves it. I mean, when you're going to buy a coach at this level and it costs as much as it does, you should have the best paint job out there. It's the first thing that you see. So it needs to make a statement. When you go into the different shows and RV resorts that are out there, you can immediately pick out a Liberty coach. You know right away. And it's, it's, it's heartwarming, I guess, for us as the owners of the company when we go into these events and you see so many of them. Dean's got lots more new stuff coming oh, out? There's no question. I mean, we, the, the reason that we changed to begin with 10 years ago was because I was getting so tired of seeing everything come down the road that looked the same, from a Prevo to a, 
uh, a class A to any of that. They come down the road, the same browns, the same swirls, the same all of that. And we needed to make a transition. So I approached Dean. Dean and I had been friends for many, many years. And to try and see what we could do with this. And this is what we came up with. And it's extremely expensive. But then again, we look at what's out there coming out from the other manufacturers today. They're trying to do what Dean does, and it's already two and three years behind what he did. And so, yeah, Dean's got a lot, he's got a lot more depth to him. Well, it's been exciting to watch. I'm really looking forward to seeing what's coming uh, new. And uh, we did just do a video on this 2023 uh, over here. So I will leave a link to that video in the description below. Another stunning piece of artwork. But what's going on with this coach? So on this one here, fourth bay here on the passenger side, we have more storage. These four units that are in here. Uh, behind this, we've got the DEF tank, so we have fuel fill on both sides of the coach, uh, 238 gallons of fuel, which is the largest capacity in the RV industry and in the industry period as far as that goes. And DEF, we have a 16 liter tank, so we have the ability to go from New York to LA with one tank of DEF or, DEF, or essentially it's like two and a half tank fills of diesel. And uh, again, we can fuel on both sides, DEF is done on the driver's side only, but right at the same position as fuel. So you're not having to move the coach uh, when you're at the truck stops. Once you get diesel, you can put the DEF in. You don't have to move it to get to a different position like these other coaches are, or use that uh, those little two and a half gallon jugs. Back here in the fifth bay, we got the uh, water compartment. So we've got a water tank monitor here. We have one on the other side, plus you have the ability to see the tank levels and the iPads and the different Crestron panels in the coach as well. And here we've got the 40 gallon water heater, the Headhunter water pump, reverse osmosis system, the stainless steel brush water tank, the aluminum holding tank. We also have, and it's been standard on our coaches for probably four or five years now, is a tankless water heater that uh, is plumbed directly to and only to the shower valve. So if you do happen to lose the hot water heater or you're out of hot water, you can use the tankless uh, heater as a backup. So oh, you should nice. still have hot water in the shower. Yeah, and what's the holding tank capacities? Uh, on... uh, they're essentially around 170 gallons for both the fresh water and the holding tank. It's a lot of dry camping. Yep. The engine battery compartment for Prevo is here with their service uh, uh, compartment as well. This being the aft uh, engine passenger side door, we've got a storage box here that we, we manufacture, storing whatever you want to put in there, hoses, belts, oil, whatever. And if you open that again real quick, mm -hmm. I just want to point out how clean this is. This is carpet in the engine bay. I don't see a single stain on anything. Is that just how it was cared for or is that detailed? That's how it's cared for. We have a starboard or passenger side shore power inlet. So if something were to happen to your cord reel, you still have the ability to use a cord to plug the coach in for shore power. We also have a 30 amp 220 outlet. This can be used to power up your trailer when you're parked uh, via shore power or generator power. Your engine gate is detailed work stainless for here. It's exclusive for Liberty Coach. Stainless steel engine belt cover and the stainless polished uh, heat guard for the engine exhaust system. We polish that up to dress it up. We make the engine guard, uh, belt guard ourselves. Uh, one thing that's nice on the Prevo part, this goes back to all the experience they have for so many years of the seated coaches and all the miles and all the experience they've gained with this. Uh, we have an air, air belt tightening system here, so that keeps constant pressure tension on the belt, so you're not having to worry about whether or not the belts are getting loose or getting wore out because they don't have enough tension or too much tension, what have you. This is always uh, monitored and always at the, at the same tension. Volvo D13 motor, it's 1,750 foot-pounds of torque. Uh, it's been a great, excuse me, 1,850 foot-pounds of torque. It's been a great, great package for us. Uh, it's been part of our uh, the package with Prevo since the mid-2012 model year. And what's the service network for someone that needs to get service done on the Prevo side of things and the Liberty Coach side of things? Well, on the Liberty Coach side, you've got our facility here in Stewart, Florida, which is our sales and service facility. You also have the North Chicago factory where the coaches, we do the interior, so we have service there as well. Prevo has a number of their own service locations throughout the country, plus they have 16 or 17 vans that they run around the country as well with, plus they're partnered up with different Volvo truck facilities to do 
work on coaches also, and we can work with them as well. There is not a larger network of service available to the customer base than what Brivo has and Liberty Coach. Yeah, and I can imagine the tour bus companies and the seated bus companies, when they need service, they need it right now. Do Does the motor coach owners have access to the same level of service that, that those guys are getting? Absolutely. Okay, so then in the uh, fifth bay on the driver's side, you can see even though this is a used coach, how good it looks back here. People always are concerned, this copper plumbing we do, you know, how does that look after a few years? Well, you can see it looks brand new. So this is our stainless steel fresh water tank, the side of it here. The holding tank, you can dump the holding tank on both sides of the coach. You can also fill up your fresh water tank on both sides of the coach. There's inlets on both sides. We have the sewer dump here, so you bring the hose up, hook on, and then this goes, turns over like so. That keeps anybody from wanting to crawl up inside the coach. <laughs> Use that here for driving on the road. Water hose reel, 100 foot electric water hose reel. And then we have a, a pull out retractable sprayer for being able to clean out the sewer hoses. We have the sewer hoses mounted up inside here. Then again, a monitor here for the tank levels as far as your automatic tank fill. Is controlled here. Your manual tank fill is controlled here as well. Your dump valves, you can do everything from this point as well as on the iPads. Yeah, and, and as we're in this plumbing bay, I'm noticing a lot of lighting. We're here inside and there's not as much light in this corner of the building, but this bay is glowing. What all do you do for lighting? We do a lot of lighting in the bays of the coach and also in the service areas that are behind compartments. So we do a lot of LED lighting so that you have the ability to see what you're doing and also in some of the compartments that are tight inside the center area of the bays. When you open up panels in there, there's a light switch in there so you can see what you're doing so you don't have to have all these flashlights and you know all this other contraptions that you can't you know use both hands. So we do a lot of lighting. Fourth bay on the driver's side, this is uh, storage bins. This can also be converted into an exterior closet if you want to. Now say someone purchased this coach from you and they wanted to have that closet converted right away. Is that something that can be done after the fact? Absolutely, or? no problem. Oh, awesome, yep. would they have to go to North Chicago to have that done? Or? Right here in Sewer, Florida. Very cool. Yep, so this is uh, the generator compartment. Again, this is manufactured by Liberty Coach. This has got the 12 and a half KW Onan unit. This coach also has, as every coach since 2017, since coach number 806, this has the 58 volt Volta lithium ion battery packs. There's two of those. This unit has three 3,500 watt inverter units that are inverters and inverter units for charging the battery or for inverter power. Uh, the way that I designed the electrical system on this, there's one specific inverter that runs just all of the sensitive electronics, so your Crestron system, your uh, TVs, your satellite receivers, the water pump, the refrigerator, all the sensitive equipment runs on inverter mode 100% of the time because it doesn't, you know, they play more friendly when they don't have all this power transition going. In previous Liberty coaches, you had a 20kW generator. How has it been transitioning to the 12.5? Well, because of the fact that we moved to the Volta system, the Volta system that we put in the coach with those two energy packs, that equals out to approximately 38 of the 8D size batteries that you typically will find in most motorhomes. Okay, there's not enough bay space, there's not enough weight carrying capacity to run 38 of those. So we have that much energy in these two packs. That allows us to be able to run two air conditioners for eight to nine hours, depending on the temperature outside, before the generator is going to come on to charge the batteries back up on the auto start system. You can run one air conditioner for 15 hours. So customers are finding out when they're using this, they're rarely using the generator because there's so much energy in the battery packs. So once you get up in the morning and the generator still hasn't started up, you fire up the main engine and start driving down the road, in two and a half hours, those battery packs are fully charged back to 100% state of charge. And how much weight do you think you saved by going from the 20 kW to the 12.5? Oh, probably somewhere in the neighborhood of 150 to 200 pounds. It all adds up. Sure. I mean, the rack system that it was mounted on and the, the rollout system, all of that stuff adds up. So this is the second bay on the driver's side. This is the Volta battery management system here. 
Uh, this button here allows us to shut the system down. We've touched on this before. Uh, if you needed to or wanted to store this coach and you didn't have the ability to plug the coach in, say for example you have a temperature controlled building that the coach is in, you can actually go over here, empty the refrigerator out, you know, get the ice maker cleaned out so that doesn't melt down, come down here, hit this button, if the batteries are at 100% state of charge, they can be set that way for three months. Volta says up to six months, you can come back to it, turn the system back on, and it's all happy. So you don't have to have it plugged in for storage. And you're the only high-end motor coach that I know of that's able to do that. I haven't, right. is, and that's because of the Volta system? Correct. And how long have you been using the lithium battery technology in your coaches? Well, I started doing that in 2010, so essentially we're 12 years into it, or getting on to 13 years into it right now. The first coach that we did it on was coach number 718, and so every coach since 718 has had lithium ion technology. So I made the leap into doing it, and we learned a lot, and we've continued to, to transition and go further and further and further with that system. The automotive industry has been using lithium technology for a while now. Is, is that part of your learning curve? Or? Uh, the learning curve mainly for us is the uh, part for the automatic starting system for the generator because that technology had to be completely rewritten. To start something on a voltage basis and watching a voltage drop and catching it at the correct time is much easier than doing it on a lithium ion on, a, on, on voltage because lithium ion stays so flat for so long and then it just kind of falls off the cliff and there's no way you can ever catch that at the proper time. So you have to do it through state of charge. So you have to monitor the state of charge and that's how we go ahead and uh, extrapolate that information to start the generator and shut the generator down. So that was a big learning curve to be able to, to redo all that. So first bay on the driver's side, again, look at all the free space we have here, roll out as well again, and uh, all the big height. I think we've got 44 to 45 inches of height there in the bay. Our chairs, awning chairs that we've got are mounted on the bay doors. So you've got two on this side and two on the other side for a total of four. So we finish everything that we can in the coach. So the gussets that are there, uh, they're from Prevo. We make stainless steel covers for those so that they're all finished looking. It's just like what we do on the face of the rollout trays. We have stainless steel polished pieces on there as well. We make sure that the coach is completely finished. And then this is the forward service bay. It has the uh, washer tank, washer tank for the uh, headlight washing system as well as for the windshield washing system. Well, beautiful exterior, but can we uh, take a look at the inside of this quad Absolutely. slide? Absolutely. Absolutely. It's a lot more space with this quad slide. Yeah. What's what's all going on in this coach? Well, this has got the Prevo flat floor quad slide. So this uh, was the second coach that we built that had this uh, new arrangement to it. This floor that we see right here actually drops down and then the slide room transitions over the top of it. Uh, so it, it makes a very, very clean uh, system. It's very fast. Uh, you know, that's one thing about the Prevo slides compared to any other slide that's out there. We don't talk about that that much, but on this quad slide, we can get this whole thing wrapped up in here and be down the road in significantly less time than any other coach, period. No class A, anything else out there, no question. Be just because of the way that it's done on the rack and pinion system, the way that the gasketing is done with the bellows for the, the seal, it's all can be done much quicker. So this interior has a very nice, almost uh, like a beachy kind of a feel to it. Is mm -hmm. there an inspiration to this interior design? Or? You know, that's Kim. So whatever Kim was feeling when she did the inside of it at this time, you know, to kind of work with the outside as well, to give it that same type of vibe, that same type of feel to it. it turned out nice. Now, is there extra sleeping in this coach? Yeah, or? this couch goes down to a bed electrically. So the jackknife's down. So. It's kind of like a full size when it's down. And so you also have the ability, if you wanted to, this couch could be pulled and a new one put in there 
that would be a convertible sofa that would have an air mattress because of course being the quad we have a lot more room in here to be able to do that. And what's the difference in weight between a quad slide and a double or a triple slide? Uh, you're probably looking at somewhere in the neighborhood of about 11 to 1200 pounds at the end of the day. And how does that affect the ride? Uh, not much. I mean you it would be tough if you didn't know that you were in a quad compared to a double or a triple. It's just the integrity of the chassis. The chassis just is that 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 strong and that uh, um, viable, if you will, that you just don't notice those type of weight differences. And coming back up to the cockpit area here, I love the diamond stitching on the seats. And this looks pretty similar to some of the newer coaches that we've seen. Um, is there any, any features that the newer coaches are going to have that this does not have? Or? Uh, not really. This coach has got pretty much most of the same uh, features. Uh, a brand new coach today is going to have what's called the lane departure system that Prevo installed in, as part of their new driver assist. This has the driver assist system on it, which has the uh, adaptive cruise control and collision alert. The um, iPad arrangement that we have here for the dash is going to be very similar to our newer coaches with the driving page and the cameras. This coach does have the 360 uh, view camera system from uh, looking above, so you have that safety feature as well. Uh, does have the uh, uh, secondary backup camera that's pan tilt and we have the radar detector as well so there's a number of features that are on here that still are done or that we still do on the newer coaches and i always like to see the old school style telephone here next to the driver what's the reason for that well that is an intercom system that can be utilized from here to the bathroom to the rear of the coach and then also to the outside uh, camera doorbell system so if somebody rings the doorbell, you can pick that up, talk to them outside. You don't have to open up the shades or you can view them in the back on the, on the monitor in the back. Yeah, very cool. And do a lot of your owners have professional drivers or do they usually drive these coaches themselves? 95% of them drive the coach themselves. That's part of the, part of the enjoyment of owning the coach. Yeah, absolutely. Well, what else is there to enjoy in this coach? Well, we've got this front end arrangement here as like somewhat of a desk work area. Uh, we can do a printer uh, down below here as well, a, a wireless printer. We have the iPad set up here that's for full operation of everything in the coach. We build the graphics for that as well. This galley being over here is now on the slide. So we've got a rather large sink here. Lots of good storage underneath. Trash drawer as well. We have the Mealy microwave uh, convection oven unit here as well as the cooktop storage in here as well Keurig coffee maker there's a lot of storage up inside the coach and plus every cabinet that you open up is going to have a light in it as well I've got to get everybody a close-up on the texture of this wood the camera's not doing justice of how high-end this surface is what type of a surface is the, are these cabinets they're an open grain if you will uh, veneer I don't remember the species of wood uh, this molding here is ma machined and finished in our shop. That's a full solid piece of wood. The cabinetry is done in a foam base core to be able to eliminate weight. When my brother did this back in 2000, when the slide rooms first got installed in the Prevo, we had to come up with a different type of material to be able to pull weight out of the coach. So he found this material, which is a substrate for the cabinets, and that pulled about 2,500 pounds out of the coach by doing that. But it also is more labor intensive to work with that material than it is if you just bought a, a, a piece of wood and finished it. The breakfast bar arrangement that we have here, this has worked out really well through the years. We manufacture these stools in-house. We have a TV arrangement here that can be also a computer monitor there as well. And this is extremely popular. I've met Liberty Coach owners that love this part of the coach. How, what percentage of your coaches come with this, this area? Uh, probably about 90%. I mean, we do build coaches that have face-to-face -face booths as well as all shape booths. It just depends on what the client wants to have. But traditionally, if we're going to build a spec unit, which this was a spec unit when we originally built it, we would go with this because it is by far the most popular arrangement. Yeah, great utilization of space. Uh, you still have a little bit of storage up top here as well? Yep, quite a bit. Is so well lit inside of every cabinet. 
all solid positive latches nothing's going to open up no squeaks and rattles even yes. on this one yes sir yes sir <laughs> now this is one of your more popular floor plans with the rear shower and the bathroom in the middle of yep. the coach yep it sure is got a nice large pantry here wow let me just sneak my camera mm -hmm. in there just to get everybody uh an idea of how bright and i really like this liner that you put down um, yeah, if you have anything that spills, it won't stain, it's easy to clean, it won't retain any uh, odors as well. And we have the same refrigerator that we're building today in new coaches, the Fisher Paykel unit. And that's all finished out, it's almost like it's just a part of the coach, Correct. the way the cabinets all match. And that's, Liberty Coach does that all in-house. Yep, washer dryer is going to be here, this is a Bosch stack unit. And then we have the bathroom or mid bathroom arrangement that also has the forward and aft door. So when the hallway is closed down with the air pocket door, you still have the ability to get to the bathroom from the aft part of the coach. Big closet arrangement here in the center. These doors are just so industrial and durable. Extremely well lit again in this half bathroom. Uh, how many lights do you think are in this coach? Oh gosh, and down lighting, I think we've got somewhere around 40. Bedroom arrangement, this is gonna have the standard size uh, slide rooms as far as their length, uh, which allows you to have all kinds of window here. So you got windows on forward, the forward and aft part of the slide room as well as over the head of the bed. And the same thing here on the passenger side slide, you've got windows on either side as well as straight out. Also has the curved 49 inch TV back here, which matches the radius of the cabinet. And is this a king size bed? Yep, this is a king size bed. This is really incredible as we're looking at this, the way that this area flows from the slide room into the rear bathroom, you can't even really tell where the slide room starts and stops there. No, there's no question. And that's my brother's capability. My brother, Kurt, does all the interior design work as far as the floor plan and the cabinet design. So he sits and goes through this stuff every day and makes all these little changes, which are actually big changes, but they really give the coach a completely different feel, bigger feel, utilize it to give you the most amount of spatial feeling that you can have. And so what year did Liberty Coach start using this floor plan with the rear shower? Uh, we go back to the 2013 model year. Uh, the double slides, they uh, uh, were the first ones that we did that. We took the slide room here and pushed it uh, into what's called the forward position, which is about 40 inches forward, and that allowed us to have this amount of room to do the rear shower, which then gave us the ability to do more in the center area of the coach for closets and what have you. So the shower that's in here, if I'm not mistaken, is probably the largest shower that's in the industry, and it's also tall. I mean, even though that I'm, uh, you know, I'm six feet, I have plenty of room in here. Plus, you got a lot of Move, room to move around you're not feeling like you're cramped in here yeah you even have a little uh, bench seat there yeah. if you want to sit down and relax and beautiful tile work here just and again we go back to the tile shower we do all rock wall throughout here so that there's no way that the water can penetrate past the tile work or the grout lines the pan everybody is blown away when they go through the shop and they see these stainless steel pans that we make but they are the shower pan. We make them in-house. So the shower pan, the shower floor is stainless steel first, and then it has the mud, and then the tile goes on it. So water in no way, shape, or form will get out of the shower. I can appreciate that. I have seen quite a few motorhome showers end up with some leaks in it. Now, how long has uh, Liberty Coach been using that stainless shower pan? Uh, I'm going to say we've been doing it for probably 40 years. Wow. Yeah, you can go back in the coaches that were, you know, well in the early years, we did that. Uh, unless it was a coach that had the round cylindrical shower in the center of the coach that had its own pan that we needed to use for that. But the other coaches that had the half moon showers with the sliding doors, those were all stainless steel pans. We've always done that. Very cool. We've got the rear sink arrangement back here, and then we've got a closet where the electronics for the satellite receivers and other pieces of equipment are back there as well. And, and did that light turn on when you opened that Absolutely. door? Absolutely, yep. Yeah, Absolutely. again, no shortage of light and, and something that's catching my eye, all the little details, like the pattern in this sink, 
matches the backsplash there. We could we could make an eight hour video showing all the little details. But Frank, I really appreciate the opportunity to see this rare Liberty coach available for sale. If someone is a serious buyer and they want to become the next owner of this coach, who should they get a hold of? Well, the best thing to do is place a phone call to the office, 800-554-9877. There's also our website that you can click on this coach and you can email directly in from the site or you can email coachsales at libertycoach.com. That's the quickest and best way to be able to get a hold of us, and we will be right back to you. Awesome, Frank. Greatly appreciate you and the team at Liberty Coach. I also greatly appreciate all of you out there on YouTube subscribing to the channel and liking these videos. I hope you're all having a great day. Thanks again. Thank you, guys, and thanks for watching, and I hope you appreciate these. I enjoy doing them, and I enjoyed being with Andrew doing it. Thanks again.